a city where shadows hide more than secrets. Two detectives step out of the fog, not to solve crimes, but to crack business cases. We dig into the numbers, dissect the strategy, and shine a light on what needs fixing. Welcome to Business Noir, where every episode is a new case, and every case has a story. everybody, welcome to Business Noir, this is our fourth episode and uh, this is Borja Nico here ready to crack yet a new case for this week. So uh, welcome Nico, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. So I'm really excited about also about this uh, case um, mm-hmm. because I think it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like the first thing the, when I started with my sister doing thing, these kind of things, we started doing something very similar. I mean, treating cases like this one. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be like very really interesting. Yeah. So in, you can give us more information about who? Yeah, like it's, it's a very exciting case because it's something totally different of what we have been doing before. Uh, we're going to meet Kate. Kate is uh, a woman who has a very interesting vision. She wants to create a hostel, but not any kind of hostel. She has a very specific idea. She wants to have a hostel in a place that will be remote and that that will create community. Because for what I understood from the conversation we had is that uh, she's seeking to create community and to make other people feel like they belong to some mm-hmm. specific place. So mm-hmm. she doesn't want just a place where you go and you sleep and ciao. It's more like uh, it's a place where you can meet uh, people like you and you can do some activities and create this kind of community and, and so on. So it's a, a very nice case to crack today okay so we can just uh, well you did the interview the other day um, with her Mm -hmm. so as normally we do we will show you the interview and then let's see what happens okay yeah let's Let's go go for it like just uh, yeah let's let's do it Oh, by the way, we are in cluster co-working. Now, can you hear the coffee machine? Yeah. Because it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's um, because we're also in a new space. I mean, not in a new space. Before we were um, recording this episode and uh, the, uh, the other episode on cl- on one of the co-working spaces in Krakow. And now we are in the other one yeah. because it's kind of like more light yeah. and more open space. So, yeah, so let's, that's why you hear the yeah. coffee machine. And stuff. Yeah, and maybe like if you hear somebody entering, it's okay. It's part of the being recording in a, in a co working space. Exactly. So, like, normally people don't work on Saturdays, but you know, there are geeks everywhere. So, exactly. <laughs> that's the, exactly. Okay, so let's see, let's see Kate's video. Let's go. Hi, Kate. Welcome to Business Noir. Thank you very much for taking the time. So, can you? Tell, tell me a little bit about you and your business idea. Uh, yeah, I think like me and my business idea do not connect because I'm a marketing specialist. Uh, but I'm also a journalist and I traveled a lot and I did some volunteering in the hostels. And at some point I decided that I want to open my own hostel because like I saw good and bad sides. I saw people enjoying and not enjoying their stays, mm-hmm. and I feel like I can create this really great community mm-hmm. if I had a chance. Uh-huh. So I started to think about it as a cool idea that might never happen, but then on my way, I met a lot of people who made me believe that actually um, my dream can come true. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I have kind of people who can inspire who inspire me, uh, but I also have a group of people who might be my team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm a bit closer to making this idea a business, uh, but I still didn't start. Mm-hmm. And what, what kind of uh, hostel are you thinking of? Like where, where would you like it to be located? To which kind of people would you target with this business? Uh, Yes, actually, I think I have a perfect picture of the hostel. I would like to have uh, an open and 
I think uh, the perfect location would be maybe an island, not deserted, but uh, you know, like with some wild places mm -hmm. uh, where uh, this might be not just the place where you sleep, but also a community, like a co-living uh, to located uh, a bit far from uh, touristy destinations, uh, big cities. Yeah, like perfectly in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. <clears throat> but with good uh, transportation so people can okay. reach mm -hmm. our hostel and get out of the hostel and yeah like i was considering um georgia uh in the beginning then uh, canary islands mm -hmm. or maybe some other island in greece but actually i'm open for any opportunities because i think even if i open it in poland but i find a good location that can be potentially interesting for people to go there mm, why not and like since i'm here and i have documents here maybe it's good to start from poland and then, then see how it goes okay and uh, you mentioned that it's not only about the hostel but as well about the community uh, so what what services are in your mind like what can make your business different to other to other hostels, what what do you want to uh, have like as a differentiation differentiating point? Um, yeah, I think um, so. Like, if you're talking about city hostels, it's usually a hostel where you can um, sleep, uh, meet people, mm -hmm. get some food, get some drinks, and um, get out to another hostel. I don't want to make this. I want to make like a place where people. If they go there, they would want to uh, extend their stay for longer. Mm -hmm. If they leave the place, they would like to come back. It should be like a community hostel, but not these creepy uh, cult <laughs> things. <you know? laughs> yeah, uh, I think there will be like a lot of activities that I would offer for my guests. There will be some uh, tours to unexpected destinations. There will be yoga lessons, mm -hmm. there will be hiking uh, activities, there will be definitely bar or cafe. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just like a nice place where you will feel like home. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. And you said that you're in marketing, so have you thought about uh, what it's your like beginning of the marketing strategy that you know how do you see your marketing strategy if you start with this hostel yeah actually i had one uh project that i was uh, really close to launch because i was staying in the hostel uh, it was in grand canaria uh, close to the Heda, uh, village and the owner of the hostel was <laughs> not really a really nice person <laughs> but like the point is that uh, he was able to sell the hostel mm -hmm. and we had a group of people volunteers who were like really happy to stay there for longer if it was not this owner so i offered them to start a crowdfunding campaign uh, and to target all the guests who went to this mm -hmm. hostel all the volunteers who were in this hostel previously and of course their friends who would know that this is a great place so we can gather money together and I think that would be a great uh, starting point for the marketing campaign mm -hmm. and yeah like I, I know that I'm a bit um, not that fast with marketing trends that are happening because for example I'm just entering TikTok uh, although the peak of uh, popularity was like a year ago or something <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think I will use all the channels that are possible and where I can find like-minded people. Like Facebook would not work for me, I guess, but TikTok and Instagram and maybe if some other social media platform will launch, I will jump into it right away. Okay, and actually that brings me to the, to the last question that it's about financing because you mentioned crowdfunding. It's something that you think for your business can work uh, crowdfunding or how do you have in mind uh, financing the the, the yeah the venture yeah, yeah like now uh, I'm working my ass off to get as much money as I can with myself but also I think uh, the background of me being a traveler for two and a half years it helped me to 
together a cool community of people who would definitely support me even like with a couple of euros. I think this could work for the beginning. I have some rich friends who said that they will support <laughs> me as well. So I think I will start from these investors uh, that are really close to me. But I was also thinking about um, traveling around cool hostels who share the same ideas as like I want to launch. And I was thinking about making it a collaboration mm -hmm. and find investors uh, through the people who already launched this business. So yeah, like it's still a work in the progress, but I think with my own money at the moment, I cannot launch this business, but I really trust and believe in people and I hope that they could help and crowdfund it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So that's it all. Uh, thank you very much and hope that you enjoy the podcast episode. Oh yeah, I will, I will wait for it. <laughs> sure, thank you. Cool, thank you. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, did you, I think it's a really good idea. Um, also, uh, before starting to, uh, to everything, I would like to do a reminder for mm -hmm. uh, all the, maybe the new people who are joining us, how this works. Basically, we have a, every, every episode we have a case a business case because we were inspired by uh, film noir all uh, these uh, detective cases actually remember when you told me that they were like oh that would be cool to do like some kind of Sherlock Holmes or something yeah. like that and I thought yeah it would be super cool and um, so we are based on real cases real real people who wants to or maybe develop an idea or they have already a business and they want to um, improve or grow or they have something to, to change, right? And we, uh, we choose every week, every episode, uh, a new case. And we, it's really, it's really long actually, because we like to talk quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we do like, um, and then we decided to, the first two episodes were like all in once in one, in one shot, mm -hmm. but we decided to divide the podcast in three blocks mm -hmm. actually uh, so it's gonna be more actually more dynamic yeah. I would say I will. and this case um in this case, we have uh, Kate, which is, she's from Belarus. Belarus. And she's, uh, I, I understand that she uh, is a digital nomad, mm -hmm. I guess. Exactly. No? She's like more like that. And um, I think it's kind of like very interesting because the, I have a lot of things to say because, you know, like this is, when I started with my sister, mm -hmm. uh, well, she's the expert on, uh -huh. on that um, because she's been doing. She's also she managed uh, in the past uh, some uh, oh, co living co space, right? And I think it's kind of like uh, it's very interesting for me to, because it's kind of like comes to the to the beginning. I think it's really interesting idea, but also a lot of things to consider. Yeah, it's a. Uh, mm, as you said, it's very interesting because the concept, like the good thing is like she got it like very clear exactly what is the concept that she wants to achieve. But then uh, having it so clear makes it a little bit more difficult because it, it takes away flexibility. And it's not a business like other businesses that we spoke about before that they are like low or non-entry barrier here the economical entry barrier is huge because you need the space yeah. and that's gonna be like uh, you know the first thing just to get the space it's already like very expensive so you have to have a lot of like economical support somehow yeah totally and, yeah. and not only about the space but also about the people yeah. the workers that you need yeah. you need a lot of people yeah I mean, you need someone for, I mean, unless you you want to do this community that you do it for other people also. Mm -hmm. For example, you can, you don't need to have a cook if the idea will be like everyone has a, let's say every week they cook for someone yeah. for, the, for the whole community, for example. Yeah. But for that, you're targeting a long term community. So it's more like co-living than hostel. <laughs> Yeah, right? but she's she's uh, she was saying like she wanted yeah. to do these uh, longer yeah, stays. Yeah, I, th and I think that one of the key takes is the the word community, 
uh, I think that this is what it should be based on the the whole approach of the business. It's in a community, which it's good, but again, it adds a layer of complexity to that. So uh, let's not, yeah. not only one, just a more, I think more and more, more <laughs> many layers. layers of complexity. Many layers of complexity. <laughs> uh, okay, we can start, for example, from the product itself, uh -huh. the offer, because she doesn't have any uh, because it's only an idea, right? Yeah. So she doesn't have any offer. I mean, fully developed, or at least we don't know. Yeah. Like that. Uh, we know barely the location. There are like many possibilities in the location. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I mean, Georgia is cheaper. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. It's much way cheaper than in Poland, for example. Only it's, it's way cheaper. Um, so that's a really uh, good advantage mm -hmm. if she wants to begin there, begin there. The other thing is like how to make people arrive there. But that would be on logistics. We, we will yeah, talk it's, about it's, it. It's very on, on, on thin and everything. But yeah. Let's talk about the product, CP1. I mean, if okay. you, if so you the, the, let, let's, let's break it to the basics. The basic that she wants to offer is a space, it's a hostel uh, near nature. So we are going away from cities, which it's good because that, that lowered the prices. And some remote place that is near to some landmarks or something like uh, interesting to visit. Yeah. And then what she's offering, it's this kind of like community vibe. Uh, maybe she will need to target like long-term uh, visitors, not people that will go there just for one week, but people that actually want to spend like one month. Yeah, okay. not only to me. That's, that's the, I think that's the key to, I mean, we, the base will be like, I think it would be a good idea to start from really small place yeah. and grow. Yeah. Because, I mean, not only for the money, but also for the logistics and the reputation that you can have. It's much better to control the small things and then grow, mm -hmm. just to see. Because what I know is just like a lot of people got a lot of really like burnout yeah. from colliding spaces. Because it's very difficult. Yeah. It's really demanding. And um, as my sister told me, like some people see opportunities when other others failed yeah and there is is not the is not because the opportunity is presented because it's a good time it's because they are really tired of this of this place mm -hmm. because it's really demanding that's for sure because I, I think I know more places that that closed than people who want to open a new one yeah I mean like it's normal in every kind of uh, this kind of business you know <sighs> You need to put a lot of effort. You need to dedicate yourself 100% to it and so yeah. on. It's 20, 24 hours, 20, almost 24 hours going there. So, so it's, I think, in my opinion, it will be like better to start with a small place. Small place, uh, yeah. Then, um, like, that, that's complex because we need to think. Would it be better to find a place to rent or just directly to buy a place? No, I think, I mean, it depends. it depends how much. How much you spend? Let's say, for example, you have, like she said, she has some rich friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, let's not be like naive. No, let's, this we, is we, 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 we don't need to be naive. I mean, these rich friends, even if you have rich friends, they're not going to give you money. They're going to give you an investment. No, it's an investment they want to, they want to, mm -hmm. they, they want to get their money back with interest. Yeah. I mean, um, or if you have someone who is going to give you the money, that's, that's perfect. But let's count that you want a return. From yeah, of money, course. Right? So I think it's better to rent a place. Because buying a, um, uh, buying a place is... I wouldn't recommend that. Because it's going to... If you don't have experience living... I mean, because one thing is having experience as a guest... But the other one, uh, you work in there also, mm -hmm. even if you have experience working there. But the other thing is having a place yeah. and running a place is very different. Because when you, as a worker, if you don't have uh, clients or you don't have, I mean, if if the season is over, you can pack your, your stuff and just go yeah. to another place. But 
these kind of things, these kind of colleagues or hostels, most of them are seasonal. Yeah, that for example, this is the good point in Gran Canaria. The season is every year. It's all the all the you know like there is. I don't know. In Canary Island, the weather is stable, so I guess that it's it's uh, it's gonna be seasonal anyways. But you have more opportunities, for yeah. example. Yeah, that's why I think the location is very important. Yeah. So let's let's imagine that it's gonna be Canary Islands, okay? Okay. Let's uh, problems in Canary Island. The space is very limited, but let's imagine that we can find the place. I'm making some estimation. This is a a, a ballpark estimation. Um, a rent of a small hostel place uh, can be like around 2,000 per month euro 2,000 euro 2,000 euro I it's think really we, good yeah we can we can go a little bit higher how many, because <clears throat> how many rooms uh, I don't know that would be We can let me check. Okay, let me check. Uh, I'm uh, yeah. I think it's kind of like um, because the, the problem is like if it's not a touristic space, you also have to count with the the logistics to go there, right? I mean, yeah. let's say you have a place that is a house, yeah, but it's not adapted to be a hostel, yeah. So you need to change some stuff. Know, from people to arrive, um, yeah. signals or something like that. Let's let's go a little bit extreme, but maybe it's not even extreme. But let's say that the renting is three thousand euro per month, and you have eight rooms. That's really good. We can go a little bit lower just to make it more complicated, and you know, always estimate for worst, and if it goes better, so we can estimate yeah. three thousand for five rooms. Yeah, I think that. But you know, three thousand is only the renting. Then we need to check, uh, you know, utilities, maintenance, and so on. So I guess that another thousand can go only in maintenance and utilities. Yeah. So it's like around four thousand euro per yeah. month. Well, the utilities, I don't know. Yeah, maintain. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So sorry. And staff. You will need at least one other person because you cannot do 24-7. But also, you can do you can save cost doing the uh, stages. Let's say, for example, you give someone for free to stay for free, uh -huh. and they can work. But you remove one bed. Yeah, but it's still, I mean, it's, yeah. it's even cheaper. If you, I think it, uh, it's really like advantages for, for the for the space. Yeah, because you can have some things done. Not the, yeah, I think it's even oh. if it's you have eight rooms. Yeah, you need a space for you unless you build something for you. Yeah, because you can okay. Yeah, you need to remove two rooms because okay, one for you, one for your staff. One thousand utilities. Utilities, uh, and then uh, what other monthly expenses we can have. Uh, yeah, and also like insurance, two hundred euro per month. Yeah, and also the things like uh, extra lining stuff, um, extra pillows. So um, three hundred in extra material. I will say a little bit more. Five hundred. I mean, have you been recently to IKEA? <laughs> no. She's surprised. Thousand. Mm, yeah, I will say eight rooms. Yeah, I think dishes mm -hmm. and stuff, and I'm like. Yeah, but this is one time. In the end, this is kind of one time expense, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can calculate differently. Ah, you, you want to calculate by month? This is the monthly, ah, okay, and okay, then okay. we can put the one time. Yeah, monthly. Okay, let's say three thousand. Internet. You need a really good internet. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that that's included in the utilities. I put 1,000 euro in the utilities. That yeah, includes. but we have to think about that. She wants to do a, an island, uh, some kind of exotic place that is going to be like... So there is not fiber there for sure. You yeah. need to find a solution and it's, yeah. it probably is going to be more expensive. Yeah. We can round up because, again, we're both parking here, but we can round up for 5,000 monthly cost. Okay. It's high, but I think that it's realistic. Okay. Then, uh, 
one time cost. One time cost, we will have the renovation and furniture, we can say 15,000. Mm, I'm quite lost here because yeah, I don't know. Me too. It's kind of okay. Let's say 15,000. Let's say, yeah, plus license and permits, another 2,000. Let's let's round out to twenty thousand one time. Yeah, investment. And also, also about the legal stuff, because legal stuff is, uh, I think, because I remember my sister told me like on hostels, if you are as a hostel, you are more regulated. Yeah, but if you are a co-living, you are not that much regulated. Okay, because so, in hostels is re belongs to the mm, hotel industry, and hotels industry are really regulated. Yeah. Okay. But co-living is more like a business, something like that. So I think it's cheaper. Yeah, I think. Anyways, like uh, one note for the people that is listening and watching, what we're doing right now is just to take some estimation, and obviously these numbers are um, they can be wrong. But it's always good to start from something, you know, you look for information in the internet, but, you know, prepare some information that can be estimated and then you are matching that with the reality and then you adjust. When you are adjusting, I always advise to go a little bit above the, the expectations because it's always to forecast more expenses and then, you know, try to cover all of them. And then you, one by one, are checking if this is actually realistic and not. Uh, at the beginning, it can sound a little bit like that we are just putting random numbers. And in some cases, it's a little bit like this. But however, this gives a, a benchmark, a point of reference. And this is your stability point that where you can start working on your own numbers. So at this stage that everything is very ethereal don't be afraid about throwing a little bit random numbers or, run, or numbers that seem realistic then you will be checking these numbers in deep and then see that in some estimations you were lower in some estimations you were higher but at least you have a benchmark to start with. yes <laughs> yeah I think it's a really good advice because again, at the end is something that people are uh, we People don't, don't don't think about this this option very often, okay? yeah. because it's something that you need to learn, right? Yeah, with experience. And yeah, this this is something I learned when I was managing like uh, budgeting in my in my previous projects when I was working for big companies. That you know the when somebody comes to you with a project, um, you need to create everything from zero. So you need to estimate things, and then. You cannot work, you cannot be waiting that people will give you the information. You will need to generate this information, find it somewhere on the internet, do whatever. As we advise always, like use ChatGPT, information that is not 100% accurate, but it gives you a very interesting reference point. And then from that, you start working and you have some point of reference of what you can consider an, a, a good estimation. So I learned like this, and it's always like a great starting point. Because you have something, you generate something to work with. You don't expect for outside inputs. And I think the, the, the experience gives you uh, not only about this, this uh, strategy, but also which points are important to think. Yep. That's something that you need to learn and you need to, you need to experience because that's the thing that we are trying to do here for, yep. for people, for, uh, for the cases and everything. Yeah, man. And be, be okay with making mistakes. That's it. I mean, like, especially at early stages, if you're afraid that you are not right, it's okay because you need to make the mistakes at the beginning of the of the planning, and then you will correct the mistakes a little bit later. Yeah, exactly. Like we were doing these uh, <laughs> videos about the call, call uh, the, um, the workshop. Yeah. And the first videos were horrible, 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 horrible videos. But we, we did it. We did it because we needed to. Uh, we, we need to know what not to do. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, you need to learn what not to do by exactly. doing it. Yeah. And we yeah. did it at the end in our natural way, that the way we are yeah. at the end. Just maybe maybe one day we, we, we should publish these videos and we look like, like yeah. you know, the car, car sellers. We look like car sellers from American movies. Yeah, exactly. From, from, from the 80s. Or from the like 80s. That, yeah. yeah, it's horrible. But anyway, let's okay, go back. Back, back to, the, to the point. So we have 5,000 per month 
uh, as a stable cost, like, and 2,000 one time cost. Okay, so as we see, it's a lot of money because, and now. Can you give me the total? It's uh, 20,000 one time, 5,000 per month. Okay, to open a business is not that big. Yeah. The problem is like you are, okay. Uh, until you start generating, you need to survive, you need to plan at least five, four months, no returning. Of yeah, but also that's why it's important pricing and community. Yeah. Because if you have a community that is supporting you every time and is coming and revisiting, then you have a plan. Yeah, but the... But, okay, but how you build a community? Exactly, because the, the thing is like building a community, it's not an uh, easy thing. You cannot do it from one day to another. This takes time. So, yeah. again, we come back that if you're expecting the community to support you, you need to forecast, and I will go a little bit crazy here and forecast that you're going to be one year without benefit. Yeah. So, that means that you need to be ready to uh, have a total of it's 5,000 per month, it's 50, 60,000, so 80,000 euro without expecting anything in return. Yeah. So that's your initial investment. So as you see, it's, it's actually good amount of money. And in the meantime, you need to have another source of income. Because you need to live, you need to eat and... Or also another option will be like, for example, like um, creating a cooperative. Yeah. Or like multi-investment uh, corporation or something like that. Okay, so then... But also is not yours. Yeah. Then let's go to the the initial capital. Let's plan it for 80,000. Yeah. This is what we need to be safe because... Mm, obviously, then if things go well, you will start getting return before one year, but you need to be ready for that just in case. Yeah. So a safe number will be 80,000. Now, how to get this? And we didn't count about, about marketing and promotion because we know she's in the marketing. Yeah. So she knows how to do that. Yeah. Exactly. And she doesn't need to hire a marketing specialist. And we didn't talk about lawyers. We didn't talk about yeah. anything. So that, that's the thing, like the, the bare minimum is going to be these 80,000 euros to open the business. Yeah. Now, uh, how can we make it? How can we make it uh, uh, options that we have? If I don't have this money... Well, she has some savings. I mm -hmm. remember she, she was saying on the video she has some savings. Yeah. And also she wants... Uh, so you had investors interested. Okay, so... That. The options are a bank loan. I don't think it's an option for her. Yeah, it's 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 an option, but it's not the main option. No, because she was quite clear about the, the she has friends and she wants to do crowdfunding. She wants to use alternative ways to have the money. Cool. Um, okay, so I have here investors. That she mentioned that she has some rich friends, but you know this is a this is a little bit far fetched. That I don't know. It's nothing. Is we like um, is ethereal? Yeah. Because we don't know anything for sure. Yeah, exactly. Crowdfunding. So let let's focus because okay, if there is one investor that would like to invest, top. Perfect. But let's let's not consider that as a first option because again, this is totally out of our control yeah. zone. So it's not worth to put our hopes there. Crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is something that she can start uh, or turning into a cooperative. So finding other business, uh, like one or two business partners that they want to invest. Yeah. Or I mean, the, the problem with the crowdfunding is that you have to give something, right? I yeah. mean, who is going to pay you? And what they're gonna have in return? What's the profile you're gonna have from this person? I mean, how you can identify this profile of client or investor? Because I have, let's say, I have my job and I am digital nomad and yeah. I'm going everywhere, and I have my savings. Why? 
why I'm going to invest in crowdfunding in your co-living space. Yeah. Unless you get a very sweet deal and you love the place. Or and you, you have a community. What? Or you have a really big community. Yeah. That follows you. Yeah. Because if not, crowdfunding, um, I think it's going to take you a long time to have uh, this crowdfunding thing. <laughs> so I think it's um, private investments. I think is the... Also... I think it's one of the th one of the most important things about this uh, this this topic this uh, about community is like I don't see Poland as a num as a, they don't have this community sense of community um, mm -hmm. like for example in Canary Island or in other countries the co living community in or the co living idea in Poland is more about like. I live in a place, I rent a place for two or three years, but I live in the same building. It's like more like a co-housing or something like that. Okay. But it's not the aspect that she she was telling about belonging to a community that you share not only a place where you live, but also philosophy or like... Uh, Uh, thoughts or like uh, or like time with them, so I think it's important to know that this community needs to be solid. Yeah, and that's a problem. No, I wouldn't say a problem. I would say like a thing to consider because at the end, it's just like um, uh, uh, at the end, you, you need you need not only about a place where you're gonna stay. But also, you need people who is gonna do something on this on this on this hostel, yeah. like um, activities, yoga, uh, painting classes, or mm -hmm. or something like this. We can we can go to see how much should we charge to our clients, and then you know we can make a we can make an estimation and see what are our margin and for example if we go for the crowdfunding option yeah. see what is what we can offer if actually it makes sense because we need to understand what is the the price that we want to charge to people and then maybe we can do some special offer for those who are part of the crowdfunding to make to see if at least it makes sense this offering because obviously we need to offer something but yeah uh, you are more into this kind of like co-living thing how much do you think that it can cost uh, I, I think it was like around it depends the place because the place for example the small place that not you don't have let's say um, average Uh, is, um, mm -hmm. how it's called installations yeah kind of um, yeah let's say like something around 800 900 euros a month for example it depends mm -hmm. it depends the place also they're, they're cheaper but um, with less options let's say and you can go to 5,000 Five thousand, five thousand euros a month. I I don't know. It it depends. It depends. It depends what you want to offer, and the, the client obviously is not the same as a. As a um, it 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 depends. Uh, five thousand the, the like client for a room. Yeah, it's but like sweet, uh, you know, like uh, yeah, these kind of things. So, uh, in my opinion, I think we'd be like. Around seven, seven hundred, eight hundred a month. Uh huh. Okay. Let's say nine hundred. Nine hundred per month. Let's say per room. Yeah. Double room, you know, like uh, with some balcony or whatever. Nine hundred per room. We have eight rooms, but we're gonna take away two because that is gonna be for. And probably they're going to be smaller ones, so they need to be cheaper. Okay, so uh, let's let's go in. Let's go down to 800 per month. Just yeah. to 800 per month times uh, sixth, right? Uh, and one second. 
That would be because I need to calculate not only that, but it's eight hundred times six. It's uh, four thousand eight hundred. But let's count that occupancy. It's gonna be around seventy percent in average. Yeah. So. We have a monthly income of three thousand three hundred sixty. Yeah, but Cannot also, be. but also we can add. You can add as an owner. You can add a lot of workshops, uh, activities, rent the place for parties, rent the rent the place for different stuff. You can also have more <clears throat> more income uh, using the space. Yeah, but still, like your main money stream is the rooms and this is not even covering the expenses that we calculated so rooms should be more expensive or the expenses that we calculated are too high and I don't think that they are too high I don't think they are too high but okay let's say for example that you put uh, more expensive yeah. okay Eight, 800 it's how but, much per day 800 uh, euro Divided by 30 is 26 euro per night. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I, I, let's say 1,000. Per night? No, 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 1,000, no, per night. Uh, when I, uh, 1, per month, what? Yeah. A month. Yeah, a month. Uh, per room. Yeah. 1,000 per six room is 6,000. And that's seventy percent of occupation. It's four thousand two hundred. Okay. So I still think that either the room should be more expensive. So then we need to go with the you know how can we make the rooms more expensive or how can we you know because the the this number should be above the the yeah you, the monthly you the monthly things that we are paying it's very important because we cannot count on external factors or addi additions to get the salary because we are not counting even her salary yet okay let's say for example like I'm checking some some really quick in Tenerife in Canary Island okay. Tenerife really quick uh, prices uh, for this stuff. We have a uh, monthly discount, so you have 28 nights, 10%. You have two month discount, is 20%. Is one person double bed suite is 60 euros. 60 euros, okay. So let's, this, these numbers makes more sense. You see, this is exactly what we were doing. We both park some numbers and then we confront with the reality. Now we are getting closer to the, to the real numbers. There's a lot of work less to do, but As you can see, even in five minutes, we managed to get something a little bit more clear. So, 60 euros per night, right? Per 30 nights. It's 1,800 per room, times six rooms. For example, like... Times 0.7, it's... Now, yes, 7,560. That makes sense. I'm, I'm seeing, for example, now a uh, high-end co-living space, right? Mm -hmm. Is uh, 2,100 euros uh, a month. 2,100 euros Okay, but we are saying, like, for example, this 1,800, we can make a discount for long term, yeah. but we can put it like that the standard price is going to be like 60. Even we can, we can go a little bit higher on individual days and apply discounts for long term like for example 100 per night 100 euro per night okay and then we will But see hold on yeah i think because i think it's important for the numbers i think it's better to calculate things per week per week because she wants long stays and she needs long yeah. stays so you think i think it's better instead of doing by day it's better to do it by week Because we know that every week, every month, you have four weeks, 
right? Yeah. So I think it's better to calculate the minimum instead of going by day, going by week. Yeah, seven hundred. So in the end, like seven hundred per week. Okay, seven hundred per week. Or we can put like different prices, but then the calculation is going to be a little bit more crazy. So hundred per day, maybe five hundred per week, and. That will be two thousand per month, one one eighty per month. So you know, you you go lowering the prices mm -hmm. as your stay is it bigger. So if we take the the middle price that it will be five hundred per week, that means like two thousand a euro, two thousand a euro per. But is it not very expensive for somebody that like if I'm a, a digital nomad? I don't know. You, you you know better than me. Am I willing to pay two thousand euros to stay in a hostel? Yeah, it depends. It depends what you're doing. I mean, some people. I mean, if you have a really nice location, if you have the beach or an amazing beach, in one block from from your house. Yeah. Yeah. Why and why not? why not? Because for that price, why not to rent an apartment? Because apartment is going to be need, because because exactly that because you're all, you're moving around and moving moving to a place a new place every time is tiring. You don't know people. You don't know where to go. You don't know how how is the local uh, culture. Sometimes. So you're paying for the community. So I guess that you're paying you're paying to to go to somewhere that you can you can be safe. You know this gonna is gonna be like uh, other people like you, okay. And you can have friends, and you can have this. Okay. Um, you have your own space, but also you're not alone. Okay. Okay. But also you have a really nice location because at the end that's the point. Instead of staying during winter in a really cold country like in Poland, you go to um, to the beach. But you said that you found some places like more or less for this price, so that means that yeah. people pay for that. Yeah. Okay, so we got it. Uh, what do you think if we make uh, a break and then we we continue in the next block and we go in details with the... I will go, I will, if you want, I will, I will go with the marketing and social media. Okay. Yeah, we need to see, like, there are some things, like, the numbers, like, we can we can recap then when we are back. We will go numbers again. But then we need to go with the social media and marketing, but as well with what kind of, because this is going to be the differentiating point, what kind of services are going to make people pay this amount of money to stay in my hostel? So this is, like, I think, like the two things that we need to check in the next blocks, okay? Okay, perfect. Cool. So let's take a, a little break now More coffee. From, for coffee, and then we can raise a little bit from numbers because it, <laughs> yeah, it's really like... <laughs> yeah, like. I think that, that, that probably whoever is listening to us is like, what the fuck? No, I think, but I, I think that, that, that that's the cool thing because... Uh, it's brainstorming. Is ideas. Yeah. It's, it's what we do. It's what we do on the on the first meeting with clients. At yeah, time, right. Exactly. Just, like, just keep making stuff, and also without the person in front of us. So exactly. So let's let's take a break from numbers, and when we continue in the next block with the with the strategies that we're gonna put. Okay. So see you in the next one. Well, thank you to Cluster because uh, we they are letting us to use the co working here. And uh, we are now on the other one because they have three in Krakow. We are now in uh, Cluster Saboce. They have uh, one in Katowice and another one in Warsaw. And here, if you're looking for a co-working space, you can find whatever you need here, like this coffee machine, couple of conference room, and a great community. And this place is one in one of my favorite neighborhoods in Krakow. Uh, it's very nice. So thank you very much for Cluster. They are being like really nice, letting us like a lot of flexibility to use this space to record, and we are like very very thankful. So I hope to, to see you around here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to the block number two. And we are, as we said, we are going to analyze uh, social media. And 
the possibilities of marketing, I will say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see how it goes. And um, okay, so let's say, because I'm really, uh, I wouldn't say worried, but I would like to talk about the crowdfunding and how you bring the community, how you can take the community, how you can engage with the community. Okay. Obviously, she's an expert. She's working in marketing, mm -hmm. so we probably we are not going to give her uh, the best advice ever, but maybe for you who are looking or checking for the same idea, so maybe it can give you some inputs. I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So let's start with... Um, To create a community that is loyal to you, mm -hmm. you need to, besides offering discounts and offering stuff, they need to share your own idea, ideology, or the values, values. general values. Exactly. Yeah. So, what's the value that we can see here? I think is not only not only about the the way that you can share the way that you live because mm -hmm. not everyone likes to share stuff yeah. when they travel. I mean, me, for example, I prefer to have my own space, my own time. And if I want to meet with someone, I will do that. Yeah. But some people really, really love to do this kind of, they don't conceive any other way to travel. Yeah. And if we have this, this kind of community, also the place has to be a really... Um, a common factor for creating this community. Yeah. So there is there is one value that it can be like love for nature because the location of the hostel is going to be ideally near. So that that was one of the premises that the location of the hostel is going to be near to any kind of like uh, nice place, beach, mountains, whatever. So mm, love to nature, it's one of the values. Then meeting like-minded individuals. I think that in the end, like base of the like the community is based of like I want to meet people like me. I want to meet people that share my my values. So this is a value per se, like getting to know other people, openness, and traveling, like people that it's comfortable being alone and going places and open-minded and so on. I, I guess that somewhere around this idea is what we need to tap in and i want to make one comment here because there is you know in in when you create community that one thing that you should look at in my opinion is for example what the brands are doing or even like the football clubs or the consoles uh, my favorite example is the 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 console world like you know there is playstation there is xbox and people fight because They, the community, the PlayStation community or the Xbox community, they feel that they belong to this community yeah. because this, the, the fact that you're using one console or the other, is part of your personality. It's a, uh, it's the same like being from a political party or the same being from a football club. It's not something like temporary or no. It's somehow integrated in your. Uh, personality. Mm. So when you want to create community, you need to see this and try to ex extrapolate that to your own business. Obviously, this is more difficult. Uh, the, the difficulty on the creating community here is like, it's not like a bar where people from the area goes and you can create this kind of community. It's a place that your main target is people that comes and goes. So how do you create a community? Out of people that comes and goes, I think is the first step will be like creating the the client profile. Mm -hmm. uh, in just only randomly and just be brief and improvising, we'll say someone who is from 25 to 35 years old, uh, both 50% male, 50% female, um, digital nomad or remote worker or some kind of a job that you can go and uh, and you are traveling all the time. No. Uh, you're traveling all the time because if, the, if not, it doesn't make sense because to pay to rent, you know, if you have to have to stay a place where you live, yeah. pay the rent, 
or the loan or whatever, and then also going to another from play at another place. Mm-hmm. Who can afford that? It's not yeah. really, it's not possible. So you really need to um, to have a a sense of traveling all the time. So that would be like you need a job that allows you to do that from country to country and everything. And also you need, I think, this this kind of this profile of the client needs to be someone who are not especially good on uh, or, or they don't want to explore new things by themselves yeah so they need a big place that they can have all these things that you would normally do if you move to a country by yourself but instead of doing it to yourself do it in a community mm-hmm. that would be like um, my yeah someone who is adventurous Someone, someone who uh, doesn't have a, the sense of belonging to a place and it's constantly looking for different places. Mm-hmm. That would be my first thought about the client yeah. profile. And um, what, what are you thinking? No, no, this, I'm, I'm going more into the direction of what kind of professionals. So I'm just checking what are the common digital nomad professions. And it's like, like digital yeah, marketers. like um, copywriting, software developers, graphic designs, uh, Ma- digital, digital marketing, marketing. e-commerce. Yeah. Well, yeah, good thing is like these kind of people, actually, they make money. Yeah. It's a profile that on average they make good money. It's high paid professions. So this is good. So we are targeting a a tribe that actually they can afford this kind of services and they have money to spend. Second, as you said, they're like adventurous people. So we need to offer something extra. So things that we are offering is uh, this kind of community. How, how do we make, how do, you know, what do we offer in terms of community? So you come to my um, hostel, my co-working space, co-living space, and a part of having your room, what else, and you know, other people like you, how do we facilitate these meetings? So any kind of workshops, activities, group activities, yoga classes? That's why it's very important to have the the idea first. You need to have your idea first of what you want, of why you want to offer this. What is the what is it? Because a community itself is not is nothing. It's like what you offer. Yeah. As, that's why you need as a owner, as a creator of this space, you need to give some um, ideology, some kind of like mindset, some kind of like, uh, some callings are more close, um, more common spaces are more like focused on, on, on yoga, some others in art, some others in uh, sightseeing, some others in, in more like um, uh, uh, having this sense of like, you're really close to the sea, I'm going to the surfers, you know, like I'm targeting surfers because surfers, they are like um, moving around all the time, right? Yeah. Because they're looking for new new places to explore. Um, there's some others, they have the ski resorts or something like that, or more like snow, more like mountains. So I think it's, that's why it's important to know what's the idea first. You need to be have a clear, clear idea first and then how to find these people uh, close to your to your let's say to your identity yeah. or to your stuff. there is a you can go to co-livings you can go to co-working spaces you can go to different places uh, organically uh, social media I think it would be like um, uh, identifying which one will be the best ones uh, in my in my opinion, the best social media for this would be Instagram, mm-hmm. because you can show a lot of uh, installations. You you the people, the photos, the photos of the people that go in there. Mm, so I think Instagram would be like the best, the very the number one, and also the website. The website, Instagram, TikTok. She mentioned that she wants to enter TikTok, mm. but it depends the age. Yeah. It depends the age. If you're 20-something, yeah, but 
Mm. But there is a part because we're targeting 25 to 35, approx, you know, 25 to 30, because, yeah, I guess that is the range <coughs> of age which these kind of professionals yeah. are, are located. I, I think so. So a part of, of your audience is actually in TikTok, maybe not the biggest. Instagram, it's definitely a good one. Yeah. And also, there is a lot of uh, events also, uh, um, events in different places, in different colleagues, and different, uh, also festivals, different, there are awards also for, uh, for colleagues in spaces, yeah. and um, hostels and this kind of stuff. Yeah, you want to say something? No, no, no. no. Ah, okay. So, I think it was like the... the um, The moving around your colleagues and introducing to co your colleagues to different colleagues mm -hmm. also it's very important There so and, and network of colleagues I try to connect with other colleagues in the world totally. I think that this is yeah totally, totally. And, and maybe create this kind of uh, you know option like of offering discounts to people that comes from specific colleagues so you yeah <coughs> Like referral codes or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that would be it. You you go check the like you know five to ten colleagues around the world that they are similar to your idea of colleagues, and you reach out these people and try to get say like okay if you send me somebody, uh, these people will have a fifteen percent discount. Yeah. And I will do the same. So I will offer you like, oh, you want to go to, I don't know, like Cyprus. I know a colleague in there. If you go from my recommendation, yeah. it's uh, it, it's going to be cheaper for you. So that can, some, that can be a good marketing strategy. And also sometimes it's not necessary to even have discounts because it depends the area that you go. Mm -hmm. Um It happens also with hotels and hostels. Uh, when you are in, obviously you need to be close, but um, you have an overbooking place, for example, and mm -hmm. you need to send people to somewhere else, and you you, you need to do that. So you call you call the uh, the other colleague is really close from you, like a hotel, and they, hey, you have rooms, you have uh, places. Okay, I I send you two or three or whatever. Yeah. So it's also it's possible to do that. That's also why it's important to know what the competition are doing yeah. right now on your area or the place that you go. Competition is really important, and to know where they are mm -hmm. and how much how much they're charging also, because we we don't know how much how much. Uh, um, they could charge in the area it's not going to be the same in Georgia or in in, in, in Tenerife or yeah. Gran Canaria so it's very very different mm -hmm. um, also the culture because and there is some really like uh, trendy places where everyone goes mm -hmm. right so colleagues they open like 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 mushrooms yeah. and some of it like very complicated or like alone or they're like It's also, I think, what is important to know, uh, to understand is like these things are these co-living spaces or like hostel spaces in community. They are they are not really stable places. Mm, there are only a few ones that are really stable, mm -hmm. and it's not the same a community in Poland and a community of co-living. A hostel place in France mm -hmm. or in Spain, for example. Also, you need to target people who is like uh, who is looking for the same. Yeah. And if you want to open one in in Poland, you need to be aware that um, also you need to you need to show them what it is, or at least to convince people to come here. Yeah. So how how to do that? How to do yeah <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's that's a, that's a difficult thing. I'm, I'm checking uh, co-living, for example, like what they offer. Uh, be part of a family of like-minded individuals. This is what we cover. Two weeks to one month minimum stay. That's interesting to ensure community building. That's that's interesting. Like two weeks to one month minimum stay. Mm -hmm. 
premium location, all inclusive billing with amenities, fully equipped facilities and bedrooms, co working with optic fiber Wi Fi, hot desk with ergonomic chairs, close to the sea and nature, chill and relaxed area, private garden on rooftop, weekly community and fitness events. Yeah, that's, that's one, basically, one thing, yeah, this is the package. Like, one thing I forgot, yeah, is about like you can be a co living, but also you can be a co living and co working. Yeah. And you can have also space for so also about the numbers will be like uh, an extra income also yeah about that um, so, okay so what you offer what you offer exactly this I also. think that, that we need to I mean like this is exactly what what she wanted to offer so it's we can just copy paste and then try to add more things and then let's go in details with the offer what kind of activities let's let's stick to the idea of Gran Canaria okay. because this is like the, the business case we're doing it we're building it there uh, and what can we offer? Imagine that we have this hostel in, in, in Canary Islands. I say Gran Canaria, but however, like in the Canary Islands, it's near to the beach. Uh, so. You can do sport every day, every time of the year. So I will add some like uh, beach sport. You have also um, whales and, uh, and uh, yeah, you can, it, I remember it was like, uh, there's activities that you can, you can watch whales, you can have everything related with the sea. So part of what you're offering is to, to, to go maybe to different excursion uh, vendors in the area and try to get good prices. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, try to to offer good prices through your co-working. Like if you come from here, we have special price. You don't get anything out of that specifically, but you get the, you know, just the reputation. Also local local food, also astronomy, cooking classes. Cooking People classes, I mean, and that's extra that you're charging. Yeah, food, food, in, food in Canary Islands is great. Mm -hmm. It's super good. Yeah, yeah. So also, I mean, uh, wine tastings. Um, you can offer tours about the nature there because we know like um, Tenerife, all these kind of places are amazing. Mm -hmm. And you can have so many sightseeing from there. You can rent some scooters or something like yeah. that. You can do something like this. You can. Uh, you need to count with the local uh, places, with the local businesses, because this is also a mistake that I see more. Um, I saw like uh, really often. Mm -hmm. People goes to a place that is, um, and they closed. They are closed in terms of like they don't collaborate with anyone else, with the local places. And local places they get sick of this place because they yeah. see they're spending a lot of money there, but they don't count with them. If you count with the local, also Community. you are like um, you are like and kind of like, um, giving a lot of more chances to this gentrification to to appear in yeah. an area. And I think it's something really like bad for the area and for the local economy. Yeah, 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 totally. Agree. And if you can't with local local businesses, I think you got more chances to stay in, in that place. Yeah, so that will be like, a part of the offering will be to integrate yourself in the local community and, uh, you know, look within the people that you have around, different kind of vendors. Mm -hmm that will offer you like wine tasting, cooking lessons, and that these extra things that you can offer. Uh, and you know, like just speak with these people, offer the amenities to do that, get a percentage of that. Like for example, let's say that I offer uh, once a month or like twice a month, a cooking lesson, a, a workshop, like yeah. for three hours. Yeah. And whoever wants to join, from the co-working or outside the co-working, actually, I exactly. will not uh, limit that. However, like co-working people will have preference in terms of, of places if they're like limited places. Uh, that would be a price, and then let's say eighty percent will go to the vendor, twenty percent to me for. For the I space. think twenty percent is okay. Is really yeah. Good, yeah, it's a, and it's a, an additional uh, thing that you get only by organizing and sitting in the place. And you that you do that like one 
uh, event or a couple of events like this per month. Yeah. And you get an extra. And then there is another extra that we didn't count. It's the bar. She mentioned like part of the co-living, ah, co-working, it's, it's to have a bar. Now, this is a business within a business, which can be good because <laughs> they can... Uh, complement each other however automatically this adds one new layer of complexity that is you need a barman or you know because you cannot do everything you cannot be like managing the bar managing the hostel managing the events it, you will it, need it, some it, stuff but it depends how you how you um, how you face this thing because if you face it as an extra service that you can have you can do it by yourself right yeah. but if you want to do cocktails if you want to do these kind of things yeah of course and also you need a license to lead to sell yeah. to I, I think that it's a good idea because I think that it can complement well but yeah. again this is creating a business within the business yeah. you need to have the space you need to have I, I will go for hiring somebody you don't need to have like a very crazy um, fancy yeah this kind bar. of like shows like yeah you, know. you just uh, maybe you just need to have the basics like beer coffee uh, and basics alcohol to do like the typical drinks uh, you know and maybe some snacks whatever yeah but still you need somebody that will work there and make this, uh, you know, in the nights. You can open that only at nights or, yeah, or it, you know, yeah. this also, is... Uh, you, you need, yeah, because separating this from the kitchen, right? Because you, you do breakfast and stuff. Yeah. But you need coffee, for sure. Yeah. Um, this kind of thing. So it's an extra. Yeah. Exactly yeah. We, we're same. not going to go deep into that because that would be another, like, full analysis yeah. <laughs> yeah, of, exactly. a, of a bar. But actually, you can you can check our analysis in the of the coffee place in our first episode. And actually, that should go more or less what you need to do, except you are not paying the the place exactly. already. Yeah, uh, you just need to pay the rest of the of the expenses. But this is the big advantage: you already have the place. So basically, if you are renting the place, what you need to do is to try to squeeze as much of possible of this place as many things that you can do in the same space because in the end you're gonna pay the same price every month mm -hmm. so one of the targets is you need to have the space generating money every day at every hour yeah. it needs a, you know every space you need to think every space I have needs to be a space that is generating money so if I have a, a room I need to make events that are generating money for this room if I have a kitchen I need to have like somebody cooking making breakfast and lunches to generate money uh, whatever corner because in the end you are paying for the whole building so this is part of your job now that you're paying squeeze out of the money uh, of the of every corner of the of the thing so and this is how because in the previous blog we analyzed a little bit the numbers and only with the rooms for this price you can already get you know enough money and then everything that you do extra then it goes to profit which is the target uh, eventually because um, however you find your financing either you will need to give back this money or if not, you will want to just profit and reinvest in the place. Yeah. So I think that this is a little bit like the, the, the idea. Use the rooms as your main source to get all the cost covers, including your own salary, and then start adding extras to get the profit. Yeah, that's what I, exactly. That's that's. I think that's a clever way, a clever way to to understand this concept, and that's why I was telling the before about like how important it is to open your space to local people. Yeah, because local people can go to the bar. Yeah, can uh, you can do events for them? Yeah, you can and do parties. You can do some stuff, and people would like that. Can be, for example, the one of the selling points is like. You are in a co-living space, but you are integrated with the locals. Yeah. And and that can be like, you know, we have the bar, which is a, a meeting point, not only for people that it's like a digital nomad, but locals come to the bar and you can mix with them and you can, you know, really not live in the experience of being isolated in a co-living space in uh, Canary Islands, but actually you can live the Spanish 
lifestyle for one month and with we know, locals. And we know how, how Spanish people are. Yeah. And they really appreciate yeah. when you go there and you get you try to integrate. Mm -hmm. And I think, do, do you think it would be like a really good idea to create a community? Yeah. To create this sense of community that we were talking before? Yeah. It would be like counting also with the... I think I think that that will be the best uh, the best approach, at least in my point of view, yeah. to create a community that we were talking about before. So then, what we will need for that, like, let's go back to the strategy on social media. Instagram should be like the main, Instagram, yeah. And basically, like posting. I will create also a page in some of these events, uh, like meeting or something uh -huh. like that. Uh, yeah, also will be like very interesting to create this sense of community yeah. um, try to identify which kind of uh, media you can use in the for the local community as well um, because maybe they use Facebook or they use some yeah. groups or something like that Facebook groups also will be very interesting to to do to, do, to create these events also to yeah, promote yeah. these events yeah to have your your channel of Facebook your channel of Telegram WhatsApp whatever like all these kind of things that try to to put people together it's included in this kind of like uh, marketing strategy yeah And in the website, the same thing. Price, price per week, mm -hmm. price per month, discounts, loyalty programs, um, uh, all really good photos of the place that you want to do. Really, like you can, you have to show uh, the place, the place there. Yeah. What people will find, actually. And I think that's it. Yeah. That's that's. What anyway, she's she is a, a marketing specialist, so she will. <laughs> Really of take course. this to the next level, <laughs> yeah, sure. but in a high level, I think that we cover the basics. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, as we mentioned, which is probably someone who thinks about doing the same. Maybe they will have some input there. Okay. So what? What about if we finish the block? Yeah, here? I think, what do you it's, think? Yeah. it's a good moment, and then let's see uh, what we do for the final block. For the final block, is I would like to do like um, basically the the strong points, the weak points, and then do a recap. Okay. What do you think? Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's go. See you later. We just finished the episode, uh, recording the episode, and now we want to tell you about the workshop that we have. We are trying to combine and compile all the information, all the techniques and, and the strategies that we use to create the, the episode in a workshop for you in Krakow. And uh, so if you are interested to know more about the process that we follow to analyze every case, Uh, you can visit the website placeboparadox.com where will, you will find all the information about the workshop. Yeah, in this workshop we want to teach you exactly what we are doing in the episodes. Uh, so for example, we can, we can teach you how to uh, establish your budget for your business, how to make a SWOT analysis, uh, how to approach your marketing strategy. So a lot of really good uh, skills that you may need if you want to open a business yep. and you can see all of them by listening our episodes in the post podcast and we just want to teach you to do that and the a great thing is like we will have a networking session with paella and red wine yeah because what we want is that you will have fun not yeah. only learning but also no it's fun. it's an opportunity to meet uh, like-minded individuals in a very nice environment having fun, make jokes, and, and learn new skills. So we are waiting for you uh, here in Krakow. So welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so welcome back. We are here in the last vlog uh, of this episode. We are being like uh, digging into all kind of like numbers, strategies. We're working on Kate's hostel, a uh, very cool hostel, probably in, in an island in uh, Canary Islands. 
where, uh, you know, community is the most important word, where we want people to come there and build a community, meet new people, and so on. And spend money on that. And spend a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> on, on that place. So everybody will be happy. Kate will be happy with a lot of money in her pocket. But the people that go there will be happy because they will feel like the experience was absolutely worth it. So win-win for everybody. Now, what are we going to do in this last block? We're going to start doing something like it's very typical for business. It's a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis a, comes from the, from the English words uh, strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's a very, very standardized uh, process in business when you are opening a new project or any business. It's a very interesting way to take a, a big overview of exactly that. What are the, the good points of your business? What are the bad points? What can you win? What can you lose? What are your risks? Everything. So uh, we're going to do that. So this, this SWOT thing is something that you should integrate in your a toolkit because it's one of the first things that you should do every time that you start a project uh, not only in business in your life in your life like, also it's, it's, a, it's a great thing it's like extremely easy so we're gonna go for that okay yeah let's go let's so go. let's start with the S that is strengths what are the strengths of this business I think the strength is like she has a, um, she has a market she has a big market to uh -huh. do that Um, because also I think there is always people around, especially yeah. nowadays. And it's rising because it's more rising. and more people is getting into this digital nomad world and, and there are like more and more jobs that are related and to that. People who likes to share and people yeah. likes more and more more and more likes to share. And I think this is a really good uh, strength actually. Yeah, yeah. As well, her own background is and strength. She is like there are like strengths that come from her own profile that are. Yeah. Uh, she knows what she wants because she has lived that. So uh, she wants to create that because she's been living in this kind of place and she has a very clear image of what she wants. And the second, she is uh, working in marketing. She's a digital nomad herself. So she understands A, the marketing around that. She knows strategies and so on. And she understands the profile because she just needs to think on herself. Yeah. So that's a that's I would consider that that a strength as well. Yeah. Mm, also, I think it's important to know that uh, that she has a passion. Mm -hmm. As I think is also a strength. She has a passion for what she's doing, and I think that's very important to if you want to be a manager from one place. I think that it's the only way because otherwise you're gonna end up like burn, like totally, hell. totally. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, exactly, exactly. That's it. Um, yeah, I will. I will leave it like that. Perfect. Yeah. So we have like basically, it's a market that is on the rise. Um, she's a marketing specialist. She knows the profile and she has the passion. That's that can be the strengths. Okay. Uh, then weaknesses. 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 Um, she doesn't have. A lot of experience managing that. Okay, Ex like of the operational experience in the, the operational like experience. managing the hostel. Uh -huh, exactly, <laughs> that How can to be overwhelming. Solve problems. Yeah, yeah. When because, it's come, yeah, because they're like having a hostel, especially if you are adding the the bar. It's uh, you know supplies, bills, licenses, maintenance. What happens when you don't have enough clients and you need to take more? Enough, cli yeah, not having enough clients, having too many clients, and because that can be as well a problem. Like if you have like all full, you have many requests at the same time. So lack of experience. Uh, for that, we can recommend maybe like start already. Like while you are like getting the financing, start getting either some courses or the best is finding a mentor go to places and ask you know try to, to get some knowledge but yeah definitely it's a, it's a big weakness yeah. uh, she doesn't have experience uh, and also it's about the weakness will be like also the um, temporality of the, of the guest also because temporality because even if it's long term let's say long term will be a month like more or less for people who are tra I'm talking about the mentality we have to think about the mentality of someone who's traveling while working 
not because you go on holidays. Mm -hmm. You while working, you move to somewhere, and a month is a lot of time if you're working and moving. So uh, also is the 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 you need to constant renovation of people. Uh, mm -hmm. That's also a weakness because you don't have a stable stable income. Uh, so you need to also yeah, like variable. Temporality slash variable income. Yeah. And um, also all the, the seasons, I think, is also in Seasonal. Really like, because some, it depends the area. I mean, if we're talking about Gran Canaria Gran Islands, yeah, it's always the same. Yeah. It's always the same weather. But the season is not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's always like summer is going to be always August the, mm, August. the top. Oh, maybe no. I don't think so, because August is when people have holidays, and you don't have this holiday. You you you're not a holidays destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You're a working destination with a community. If you are able to integrate everything, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, I agree. Another weakness is what we spoke before: the cost. It's a costly business. I would. Don't you put it as a threat more? Can be, yeah. Not sure. Well, both any one one of them, one of these actually. Yeah. Because it's kind of like. Uh, mm. Okay. The the thing like it's a weakness if you consider like the first investment like a weakness is that she doesn't have the money and then a thread is that the business eats every month. A lot of money. So if okay. you don't have clients, yeah. so the, the, I will put like the the first. Expense because I was investment as a weakness. As okay. a weakness. Because I was thinking that I was uh, taking her words, uh, saying like she has some investors interested, and I was I was I was thinking about this way because yeah. it's kind of like uh, if she has already investors or like people interested, I wouldn't say a weakness. I would say more like a threat. Let's say she she are not gonna have enough money from this. But since it's not sure, I would still put it as a okay. weakness yeah, because you know every take whatever you can control. Like this, and whatever is not sure, don't take it okay. for granted. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You, you always have. We always have time to change it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, as a weakness, I put I, that she doesn't have experience. That it's a seasonal uh, business with variable income, and the first expense investment that she doesn't have the money right now. Yeah. Opportunities. Opportunities. A lot of opportunities. A lot, a lot no, of opportunities. I mean, opportunities is uh, something that, for example, uh, is a the place, the place that she wants to do is actually very highable, likable. Like, you, you, you can like and you can uh, actually create a really easy community if you have the right place mm -hmm. to go there. Because at the end, it's opportunities, community creation in yeah. a nice environment. In community a nice environment. creation, nice environment. Uh, as an opportunity, also, as you mentioned before, blending with the locals. Yeah, blending with locals. And I think the other the other opportunity is like you can also uh, have volunteers that can help you. And this is also really good. She, she was, I think, she started doing this way. Volunteering. Yeah, she was volunteering. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, I think this is a really good opportunity. In exchange of you know food and like, for example, people that wants to learn English. Yeah, that can be an, an in, because most of the people that you are gonna have there, it's gonna be English speaking people. So you can offer this kind of like yeah, you can you know eat here, help a little bit, then you will learn. Oh, for example, you are like uh, I don't know, you have your job, and then you move there, mm -hmm. and you're working in the kitchen, for example, yeah. or you're like teaching something for free. So it's also for you is really like a huge saving. Uh, for as an owner, it's yeah. a huge saving, yeah. and also for the for the customer, for the guest, it's yeah. also a huge saving. Okay, so how how what should I put in the in the opportunities? We have community creation in the nice environment, blending with locals, volunteering, volunteering, volunteering program, also loyalty programs. Is I think is a really good opportunity there. Loyalty program, networking with other, yeah. uh, co-living, yeah, working with other. And belonging also another opportunity will be like belonging to a network of co-livings or places like like this one. 
Yeah, I mean, like this is like networking with other colleagues. Ah, like, yeah. You know. Sorry, I didn't. I mm-hmm. didn't hear the last part. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that would yeah be that's. That. I think that this is it. Like then we can go in in details and see what are our recommendations for each one of the points, and uh, threats. Threats. Yeah. Money. Uh, the number one. Eating, <laughs> money, business. If you don't have clients. You cannot that person put them hold. No. You need to have clients. You need yeah. to have yeah. Eating money business. It's one of the biggest threats. You need uh, constant, constant movement, constant movement of, of, of generating, generating. Regulations things. can be a threat. Yeah, local regulations, regulations can be, like, always can be, especially in Spain. In know. Spain, like if your place is too close to the coast, uh, then there will mm, be like. I wouldn't see that because it normally you you you're not gonna. I mean, the idea is not to build something, yeah. right? She's not gonna build anything. She's gonna use things. So, that yeah, 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 already there. Yeah. It's about more regulations about uh, kind of like if locals or people want they don't want you, the the, the law is in their favor. Yeah. Because if they want to, if they want to kick you out, they will kick you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a threat. Uh, in more, more in this sense. Also, a threat would be like a natural disaster. Natural. Canary Island, for example, is I mean, it's full of volcanoes. There was like I remember it like yeah. two, three years ago. It was like yeah, this the pal- huge La Palma, La Palma. Like the, yeah, yeah. yeah so, the, the, oh, I don't know, like a, a really huge rain or something. You know how yeah, r- yeah, yeah. weather is right now right? with the climate change and everything. Natural it's disaster, crazy. local regulation. The eating, eating money business. That's are like okay. These are real threats. I think that the, the threat, the, yeah. Another threat would be like poisoning fruit or something like that. Here, yeah, like about like health, yeah. health stuff, health diseases. regulation or yeah. health, uh, yeah, health reputation. Yeah, put and um, yeah. That will be the um, yeah. Okay, so let's let's go back to the to the first point and let's see recommendation point by point. Okay, so for its trends, uh, what do we have? Yeah, the market is on the rise. So basically, I think that there is not much to do here. Only that to ride the wave. That's it. Like yeah, but also I think it's important here, at least in my opinion, will be like checking the competition. Yep, checking competition will be like this. In my in my opinion, would be the strategy and number copy. one. And cook, you know, like don't be afraid of copying competition. No, um, like uh, that's that's it. If somebody is doing it somewhere else and it works, uh, this person already had to make through a lot of mistakes, and you can just copy what they're doing to yeah. have a, your your own starting point, and then from that, you Learning. you will exactly you will learn and you will shape your own business. But don't don't try to invent the wheel. It's already invented by somebody else. Just <laughs> like look for who is the best and copy what they are doing. And don't try to be a cheap copy, but learn from the best. Yeah, this is uh, perfect. A marketing specialist. So definitely she's a marketing specialist. So she should tap on her own strengths that, okay, Use all your knowledge into your marketing strategies. You don't need to hire nobody for that. This yeah. is a huge point for you. Totally. You can do that, or you can uh, connecting with the volunteering thing. You, if you don't have the time, you can take somebody to teach them what you know, like an internship program. Like I need somebody that will learn from me marketing in exchange of doing the marketing of my hostel. Yeah. And it's a win-win situation. Somebody has a mentor, and you don't need to take the heavy lifting of that while you keep the direction. And I think it's very important what you said because I mean, at the end, even if you are like um, a marketing specialist, one thing is marketing specialist, and the other one is hospitality specialist. Yeah. Because hospitality is also at the same is one of the key points yeah. on having a hostel. Or having something like like this one, and hospitality is very different than marketing. And the, the mm. thing is, like, yeah, as yeah. you said, it's better to do that. Totally. Perfect. So another another strength is that she knows the the. I mean, like, she has the experience. So basically, you know, think uh, how your client would like to think what you will need as a client, and yeah. just. Put it in practice, yeah. you know, this empathy to the client and the passion, I think that it combines. So I think that strength is the thing that we can go a little bit more light because it's, you know, it's your strength. You just need to 
to make yeah. sure that you you tap them and, and you put your focus there. Mm-hmm. Weaknesses. Okay, she does not have experience. Uh, that's a well, big weakness. I mean, the full experience, right? Years of experience. Yeah, she, she, she doesn't have some, experience yeah. in, in the other side, like managing, running a small um, hostel. Yeah. So this is a lot of organization in terms of supplies, in terms of booking systems, uh, you know, a lot of things that can go wrong, uh, everything. So it, what, how can she overcome this? Um, partnering, partner, partner, uh, having partners. Yeah, if you need to hire somebody, oh, make sure that you hire. Not hire, <coughs> just like say, uh, she said that she has a community, like a small community that she was... Uh, living on the on that colleague on that place mm-hmm. on that hostel, so come with them and just like um, doing things together. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can do these things. I can do the other things. Meanwhile, I think it will be a really interesting way to. Yeah, but for that, these people will want a return. So it's like an invest. They, are they I investors? No, I'm talking about like these people who wants to also create this community. And she was talking about like she was doing a volunteering and she yeah. created a community with these people. Yeah. And these people also are interested in to build something. I, I get your point, but still I think it's very unstable. I don't know. I, I would be afraid of going into that direction in the matter that first you don't know if these people is actually they, they have this experience or they're just a bunch of people that they want to help, which is Fine, <laughs> but actually, what you need is somebody that knows. Because yeah. if, if they're like a bunch of people like she is, like they like the experience, but they have never managed. Yeah. Uh, the possibilities of disaster, they don't go down; they go up. <laughs> so I, I will go into the different uh, different direction. It will be like if she knows people that runs hostels because she has been in hostels. Schedule time with these people with the owners. Uh, two hours and say to them look I want to open my own hostel can we have like two hour session in which you explain me how you run things give me tips and if you that you do this with two three people uh, first you get free um, knowledge which is amazing and second this is a, a technique that it's very interesting that is you involve people in your own success yeah. And this is very engaging for people. So because we are, you know, you tap into the ego of some people. So you say to somebody, uh, come to these people like, yeah, I want to to create something like you have because your your hostel is amazing. Can you give me some tips? And then automatically, if I succeed, you will feel part of this success because especially if I'm smart enough to make you to let you know, like, hey, you know, I launched my hostel and it's working. Thank you very much because thanks to the ideas that you give me, it's going so well. So automatically, you feel like my project belongs to you as well in a part, yeah. and this is very engaging because in the end, it's it's a contact. So. I will go more rather than into volunteers that they may have goodwill but no knowledge. Go for the people that has the knowledge to overcome this. Yeah, the, the volunteers it's a, it's a, yeah. is they, they can come for another stuff, but but this this yeah. weakness it needs sense. to be overcome like this. Makes sense. Then uh, temporarily temporarily. Seasonality, yeah. whatever. Seasonality, seasonality. Um, seasonality. I think that will be like trying to find alternative methods and alternative income play, um, uh, activities to do when yeah. you have low season, or like uh, creating uh, retreats. Also, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Also, and trying to fight uh, uh, being like cautious and being cautious and think on the future I think thinking by season will be like very 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 yeah, clever man. to do even like change the prices like, like everybody you have, does you need to change the prices all the time yeah yeah. when you have one room only uh, free then you need to change the price yeah you need when to you lower all the um, all the place empty or almost empty also you need to change the price yeah you need to, to try because and it's, it's what we were speaking you have a space and you're going to be paying the same amount of money for the same space yeah. so you need to squeeze every dollar and it's better to rent and to throw 
this kind of offer like 60% discount and at least get some money yeah. because otherwise the business is going to eat you up. Yeah. yeah. But if you need if you need to go to 60%, it's something wrong. I know, I know. That's <laughs> something uh, wrong. Let's hope that this is not the case. No, but, but, you know, just keep in mind it's better to have it occupied for less price because at least they are generating. And, you know, there will be moments that even if you cover costs, that will be good. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, another weakness that we spoke is the first expense investment. Uh, well, we spoke a, a, a lot about this, like how to get the investment. So I think that we don't need to yeah, to go again. True. Like yeah. it would be like just repeating the same that we spoke in the first block. Okay. Opportunities, community creation in the nice environment. Um, I think it's also very really like uh, we talk about it before. Yeah. I mean, just the opportunities. That's the positive things we, we don't need to think about. Yeah, like, uh, that's that's spoken. Blending with locals, we spoke about that. Volunteering yeah. program. This is something interesting. Yeah, yeah, volunteering program. Well, but as we talked before about like if you have something that you, someone who can help you during these these uh, these uh, certain months of the weeks, that you 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 gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of uh, Reinvestment. You yeah. can reinvest what everything that you got, because yeah. at the end it's something you have opportunities. You can, you can also uh, kind of like um, ask them for help to create content for your social media or something like that. Yeah, you dig and people can. Yeah, see yeah. These kind of things, like people that they want to be, you know, they can get something out of your hostel, and you get something out of them. Like, yeah, like. Yeah, least even like you're gonna have like professionals. Like this is interesting because the idea is like you're gonna have like professionals, high paid professionals, mm -hmm. and this nomad style it's uh, it's appreciated by a lot of people mm -hmm. that want to learn that ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can try to make something in which you partner people that it's working in in your co-living space with people like local people and maybe they can teach something you can even like reduce expenses for some people by saying okay if you teach some people from the local community I will reduce you like 20% what you're because in the end you are adding value yeah and If you add value, that's amazing. And then you have a, in exchange somebody that is working. So you, you lose 20% of some renting, but you uh, get one person that is managing, uh, it's waiting the, the tables for you. And in the end, you compensate plus the added value. Exactly. Because there is always in the, every transaction, it's not only the economical part, but the added value. Because if you are adding value constantly, you become a reference in your a field in your area even in, in your locality so exactly that's and it, this attracts business so the adding value it's, it's always good yeah totally loyalty program uh, the same stuff it's yeah. about like trying to trying to count with people who are loyal to you it's yeah. the same adding value adding adding new resources exactly networking with other colleagues we said that as well like let's go to threats this is an interesting okay but I mean like it's interesting but already we have spoken about that uh, the main one uh, and I think that the, the biggest threat is what we spoke is like it doesn't matter how much you generate you need to pay every month yeah And we calculate like five five k per month, yeah. a euro. It's a lot of money. It's so if you don't generate this, uh, mm, surely can put you in bankruptcy. Yeah, but also I think it's like that's why we talk about the beginning about it. Uh, this uh, at the beginning, um, smaller the place, more easy to control, less expensive, and more actually the. Um, Uh, is more easy to let it grow. Yeah. By, yeah. By, so you can, uh, you, it's kind of like, scal scalability is, is, yeah. is much more secure. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Let's start small and then and then if you make enough, you can change. Yeah. You can make an, an analysis if you can do it and then change. Mm -hmm. And the other is, my, my recommendation is, as I mentioned before, uh, before you start, have a money, enough money to hold one year without... Yeah, approximately like you cannot make it one year at least 10 months and be pessimistic in the matter that you will need the money to survive 10 months without making money probably you will not because you know in, in, in the idea is like once you launch already like in the second month you will be generating benefits but if you have already this money in your pocket great you can reinvest it 
or whatever. But at least have, you know, make a calculation. Uh, I said one year expenses, it's a lot of money, but at least six months, that will be like the bare minimum that you need to have like this money in your pocket to make sure that the first six months uh, you will need to survive with that. So yeah, this, this is a, a big threat. Uh, local regulation. This is random. This is random, and also it depends. I mean, uh, it depends on the local uh, laws and regulations and everything. You need to be like very. You need time and just you need yeah. a lawyer to do that. You need a lawyer. You need to investigate before opening. Yeah. Uh, Ask other colleagues, like you oh, said. Exactly. Yeah. Ask other colleagues, but as well, one thing that I will do is to take the law and regulation from this country or place and put it into chat GPT and ask questions like because you know these kind of documents if you read them they're like normally very like time consuming uh, and so on but normally chat GPT can do very good summaries so you can put it and start asking questions I want to create this hostel what are the main points that I should read uh, what are the main problems I can find what are the do 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 and yep. you don't even need to have it in your language so for example she doesn't speak Spanish but this is something I have done with the Polish law like yeah. I I took the Polish labor law put it into the chat GPT and start asking the questions that are interesting for me okay what about this what about that and then I got a lot of uh, yeah. insights so it's a, it's a good tool natural disaster totally random uh, get a good insurance you cannot control, you cannot control that <laughs> yeah, so yeah uh, insurance and just yeah, don't, don't, don't be don't play with the you know try to get a cheap insurance get a good insurance yeah that's it like because and don't think too much about it because it's, just, yeah. uh, it's something that is if it, if it happens happens yeah. but you should get a good insurance if something happens you it's, it's well, insurance normally they don't cover natural disasters okay so then if there is another I mean it has to be like catastrophe you know like this kind of like all this okay what you can do is keep always in mind that business should generate always a money that you will save for emergencies mm -hmm. so while you are making the budgeting of your business you have the uh, you need to calculate in the matter that you have like you're covering your expenses one second uh, covering uh, all the salaries including your salary then for the remaining money you will divide it the way that you prefer into profit and emergency fund and also I think there is a, a, a in the Spanish law there is a law that if when you don't have enough uh, when the ad zone for example is considered uh, catastrophic let's mm -hmm. say after a natural disaster they also have a help uh, for yeah. for businesses and also another thing to add is like the place is not yours yeah so you're not going to need to Pay it's not your responsibility actually yeah. it's but about you, the business but it's only like if your business falls you need to have some money again to restart exactly. somewhere else yeah. so that's why it's very wise again divide the money that you are making into first you need to pay all your expenses including the salaries yeah. including your own salary because at the beginning you should have your salary you should not live out of the profit yeah. you should set yourself a salary a you know, I don't know, 2,000 euros, 1,700 euros, whatever you consider once that you make your, your money, then you will increase your salary, but you should have a salary. And then once that you are paid everything, there will be a remaining money. This money should be divided into, let's say, 20% emergency fund, 80% profit, or the opposite, whatever you think. And then, or even like in three parts, reinvestment, emergency fund. Yeah, as we talk, yeah, as we talk yeah, yeah. in one, one occasion. Okay, so I think that, I don't know, I have I think we have nothing everything. else to say. I think that we have dissected the, the case. Uh, the case. If, you are, if you arrive to this uh, section in the podcast, thank you very much. Thank you very much for <laughs> listening to us. Thank you very uh, much. It's, uh, it can be tiring to listen to it. I guess it yeah. will be like one hour and 40 minutes in total. So it's quite 
So Quite thank you, thing. thank you very much for coming here to this to this. Uh, and if you have any suggestions, please let us know. Uh, the comments are open in Spotify and YouTube, so you can leave any any suggestion or directly write to us. Remember that this podcast is produced by Placebo Paradox. If you like what we do. You can always go to the web page and you will find all our services there. If you want to appear in the podcast, just write to us. And thank you very much to Astrid. Uh, so she's uh, supporting all this uh, all this knowledge that mm -hmm. uh, we know about about this stuff. If you want to check, uh, she has a website called connectivism.com.me. Sorry. And uh, I will... Put it down here. Uh, you can check. It's basically like uh, supporting co-living spaces and co-working spaces. And uh, I don't know what we would be, would be the next case, but we thought about that uh, we're gonna do uh, episode every 15 days uh -huh. now, yeah. because now if we want to focus on having a good quality of what we are doing, uh, we need more time. And I think we need to more, more time to find new cases, to uh, record the interviews, and to have the enough time to do it. And I think we thought it would be a like very, very interesting, very interesting, and very useful for us and for also for you uh, to have an, two episodes every month instead yeah. of four. Um, but we wanted to try. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do like this, and in the future we will see. Yeah. If we change it again to, but it's true that it's it's a lot of work and and we prefer to deliver a good product than just to to do something that is not up to the standards. And especially as you see, every episode we try to improve something, location, video. So it's only the beginning of a of a long journey. Exactly. But thank you very much for being there. If you have listened uh, this episode, I refer you to the to the previous ones. And again. We are very happy to have you in this journey. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, we have a, a workshop very soon. Uh, we will send. We will give you all the details here. And if nothing else to say, that's it. Thank you very much. See, See you in you. the next one. Bye.